Hey y'all, I'm Shayna and I'm back with another review. This is for Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 15, episode 15, Sip and Spill the Tea. We almost on the finale, y'all. We almost going to the reunion. Can you believe it? <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it before we do. Y'all know I need y'all to do me one favor. That's free. Ain't gonna cost you nothing now. Hit the subscribe. Watch the video on through if you're new here. If you're not, welcome back. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you are subscribed, thank you. Like the video. Help me get through this crazy YouTube algorithm, okay? So we start off with Cynthia. So Cynthia, bona fide friend of at this point, she might as well just come back as a full-time friend of and my edit can just go ahead on and go. I mean, it, I don't want to take nobody's check. I'm just saying. But anyway, she stops past Kenya's hair salon and she said her divorce is final. And then she said in her confessional, uh, Kenya need to go ahead on and wrap her divorce up. Like in the time that Kenya has been separated from Mark Daly, Cynthia has gotten married and gotten divorced. <laughs> like, girl, what's the hold up? Now, I know one could say, oh, well, I mean, Cynthia didn't have any any ties with her husband and Kenya has Brooklyn. Kenya has Brooklyn, but Mark only saw Brooklyn twice in two years. He, they never lived in the same city, let alone state. So they're not splitting up assets. I mean, I don't know what the holdup is. It, it's getting ridiculous at this point. They've been going through a divorce longer than they've actually been together. She only seen a man like six times in total, and this is taking years. This is crazy. But anyway, <laughs> so Sheree is planning her granddaughter's sip and see. And that's all it was. You're going to see that baby real quick, and that's it. But we're going to get there. Um, I see Cairo has on a She by Sheree hoodie. I've been seeing him and She by Sheree more than I've seen Sheree and She by Sheree. Marlo is dragging her fake boyfriend storyline with her, it's not a therapist, her life coach. Girl, we don't, anyway. Um, the Tucker Burrises are filming that movie with Drew. And then we see Sonya, Ross, and Deuce, and they are Sonya's doctor's appointment. Um, I, my first thought was, I'm surprised they didn't wait to tell him, like, I understand people want to, they get excited and they want to share the news, you know, when they feel the time is right, as you should, as your uterus, do what you want. I just didn't think that they would share until they at least got the first ultrasound. Like she done already made t-shirts, did two surprise reveals, and she done told her son he had the appointment. I would have personally waited until I got the ultrasound first, especially because it's not her first child. So it's like, you know anything can happen now anything can happen at any point if you've been here with me you know from the my, my first review i've shared that i you know i went into early labor with my very first pregnancy at 20 weeks and unfortunately that baby is no longer with us um and i have two kids now but and that was for i knew the, the gender everything so i mean and that was traumatizing so you don't know when anything could happen but i would at least wait to make sure the doctor confirms like yes this is in fact a viable pregnancy before i told a small child but i mean i understand sonya was excited she said that he wanted a sibling you know they usually do at that age when they're only child we do know Sonya miscarried that child um, and now she's currently pregnant with her rainbow baby. So shout out to Sonya. I, I hope you have a great, successful pregnancy and a happy, healthy baby, safe delivery, all of the good things. Um, Dr. Jackie walks out because, I mean, who else? Like, is there any other doctors in town? I don't think so. What's Dr. Simone doing? Who knows? But she's not the go-to doctor. Me and my mom talked about this when we did the live um, a few weeks ago. I don't know what Dr. Simone got going on or who she sees. Her clients must be real private. Dr. Jackie is the ghost. The older Dr. Jackie get, the younger she looks, okay? She is aging backwards. She walked in like, uh, and why is he here? This is not a pediatrician, honey. Why, what, who, we don't allow children back here. I mean, the cameras is one thing, but what's this? <laughs> and saying so like, oh, I tell him everything. And it's like, girl, you know, early on you get the ultrasound vaginally. So 
<laughs> but okay, uh, okay. Again, her uterus, her business, fine. I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I just, I just would have went with my husband alone because that's a lot for a child to take on. They had to turn him around. The camera crew was there. It was tight. It was too much going on. So Dr. Jackie said this is a geriatric pregnancy. They discussed the risk of having a baby after 35. Um, somebody said they should use a softer term, but I thought this was a softer term. A few years back, I thought they were calling women who got pregnant at 35 and up, like elderly mothers or older mothers or something. Cra it was crazy. <laughs> and then they switched it to this. So I don't know. Um, but a lot of women are having children later in life. And the way this economy is going, they're going to keep having them later and later, okay? Um, Dr. Jackie said after 10 weeks, you can find out the sex of the baby. So they're excited about that. Right now, sign is only five weeks. Um, moving on, apparently Candy is allowing Todd to be cheap and go to Tyler Perry route to film the movie, filming in only a few days and filming at their home to cut costs. And she's letting him make these cheap decisions for this low budget looking movie because he's a Leo that likes to be in control. Okay. <laughs> I just, what does it even have to do? And Candy's a Taurus, and I, I know him Taurus like I know him. Um, I'm just saying, I'm surprised, as stubborn as they are, that she even went for this. But, I mean, especially, it's one thing to film a few scenes, you know, in the living room, but y'all doing sex scenes in my bit. No. No. I don't even like company coming over, honestly. Really, I don't be having people over like that. Like, I don't, mm 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 -mm. Like, you got to be real selective of the energy you let in your home. Like, it's a little, really just family only. I, I don't, mm -mm. <laughs> ain't no way. He would, if the budget that tight, then we don't need to be doing this movie, okay? So, I mean, because I know they freaky, but it just, <laughs> but, um, all, you know, all the friends and Candy's friends, pretty much, they all showing up. Uh, Todd made a joke about being in the sex scene with Drew. And again, I know they into some kinky stuff, allegedly, but uh, that was inappropriate. You know this is her co-worker. I don't, this, yeah. So Drew is going on and on about the girl-on-girl -girl scene and how uncomfortable she is. Somebody said, fake it like you do it with Ralph. Fake it the same way you fake it with Ralph. <laughs> Now, all this discomfort would be believable if she didn't keep saying it over and over and over again. Like, girl, we heard you. Like, you're an actress, ain't you? I mean, goodness. Act. So, Drew said she didn't tell wreck -It with Ralph all the details about the script. Because, I mean, he liked Tommy and Martin. He ain't got no job. <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I don't know if he got a job. But if he do got a job, Drew apparently don't know what that job consists of. So she like, I don't know what you do for a living. You don't need to know all my business. Marietta brings up Courtney, no cousin, just Courtney. And she plays the footage of Courtney saying, bish. Um, but we don't know who she's talking about. She she was pointing at Sonya. She could have been talking to Sonya. She could have been talking about Drew. The receipts wasn't really given what they were supposed to give. I mean, either way. Courtney did lie because she said, I never use that word. I never refer to another woman as such. But then we saw that she did. So, girl, you lied. But, my God, if you're going to bring some receipts, they need to be clear. And Drew just don't trust Courtney. So, we see we go, we see she buy, she don't pay um, with her party planner. She's talking about she don't got no budget, you know. I don't care if it costs thousands of dollars for these balloons. Y'all ain't getting paid no way. Allegedly, <laughs> but uh, Sheree is giving change of faces in these confessionals. Each confessional, her face is just, what is going huh. <sighs> <laughs> So, Drew is acting like um, this is her first role ever because she like, oh, like it, there's so much going on with the cameras and the lights and the production and this and that girl. Okay, well, that's what we expect. And this is a movie, we know it's not just you and the girl in the bed. And bringing up how she uncomfortable again. Girl, we don't care. Marlo is having her foster care event seem like a scene they just threw in there last minute. It didn't flow. It didn't go. I guess they just had to have Marlo in the episode some way, somehow. <laughs> um, I think for me, it would have been nice to have this event with 
foster children who are currently still children and still in the system present day. That way they can see the the other side. Because, you know, when you get older, you're about to age out. You might feel like I might not get a family or whatever. You know, I, I haven't been there. I can't relate. So I don't know exactly what the thought process would be. But it'd be nice to see some people who are now adults that are successful um, who took that story and, and, you know, did great things with it. But, um, no, it was just a few people there getting awards, which was nice. Uh, and then tall Scott Lee arrives. He's not busy saving the world with his cape on, helping people from cars and whatnot today. Um, but for some reason, Marlo was more excited when Sheree showed up for five minutes than when her man, her man, her man arrived. I'm like, why are you jumping up and down like you ain't seen Sheree in years? What's happening? So it's time for uh, Sheree's party. Um, Sheree's party featuring baby Mecca. Sonia's timely per usual, but before a black event, baby, you want to come a little bit late unless you want help set up. If you don't want to help set up, then, then give it like an hour or so at least. So back on set, Drew is in her trailer complaining about the role and uh, this and that. Girl, you accepted it. You got paid for it. You said you got a nice check. So just hush. That's why Candy can't be helping these girls out because they don't ever appreciate it. Um, and... I, mean, I do understand her not being comfortable filming that sex scene in Candy's bed. Like, that was a little too much for me. But, girl, you already signed up. You done did it now. Girl, talking about the thing, Lifetime or above. I don't want to do... What Lifetime movie has Drew been on? Let me know in the comments. Cause I, I don't remember seeing her in anything. Somebody just had to point out to me that she was in White Chicks. And she was a friend of, like, a supporting cast man. <laughs> like, she was Marlon... Wayne's wife's friend like she I don't even know if the girl had a name anywho that's neither here nor there so Ralph arrives to get his camera time in and he said he respects his wife as a thespian <laughs> Ralph is her biggest hater when I say I probably say at least once a review Drew been sleeping with the enemy child I mean it um he claims that you know he wants to watch but I think he would get jealous. I think he don't, if he watched, he wouldn't be watching and getting turned on and wanting to join. No, he would be jealous of what she got going on. Drew wants him to leave because he's making her uncomfortable because he knows she doesn't like to talk about that stuff, especially on camera. So <laughs> back to the party, all the ladies arrive. It's like weird how they split it up. They should have just did straight movie scenes and then the party because it's two different days and y'all going back and forth. And I don't know. Anyway, at the party, all the ladies arrive. Marlo aside because she went to her funeral, so she won't be there. So, Kenny arrives with her homegirl, who don't hardly say nothing yet again. A Miss Ma'am, everybody got the memo. I know you a plus one, but everybody understood the assignment and wore nude. And then you wore baby blue. It's a baby girl, and you have on blue. Like, girl, just go home. I mean, you just wasn't prepared. Like, you trying to shine, like, bright like a diamond, trying to stand out. Like, you're doing too much. But anyway, Bob arrives, and the grandparents take a picture together, alone. And Bob tries to cop a feel. And, honey, wrong road. He did ask Sheree, can I, he said, can I touch you? And she said, it depends on where. The answer would have been straight up, hell no for me. But that's just me personally. So, Martel arrives. Really didn't need him there. Um, Drew is outside, but she won't come in because she saw Anthony, her former assistant, also Sheree's former assistant. Drew said that man took her shoe that she had laying off to the side in her section. She was in the club dancing. She was, had her bare, dirty feet out, and she had her shoes off to the side in the VIP section. He took a shoe and threw it at her. Mm. Child, mm -mm. I don't see it for him. So a couple hours pass and Sheree finally comes out with no baby. And then Sheree claims unemployed Anthony hooked her and Martell up. I don't think I believe that. I'm trying to figure out like how that even would make sense. Now, she would have just said, Carlos King hooked me and Martell up. Then fine. Like, okay, that's what we thought. But Anthony? I hope she remembers this lie. Allegedly. <laughs> 
So Candy tells Sheree Drew didn't feel comfortable coming in because their former assistant was there. Anthony said, ain't nobody worried about Drew's wide ass. Get him off my screen, please. Y'all gonna leave Drew alone. Like, stop acting like she really got a wide back. She really don't. So he started getting sassy, waving his fingers. I'm like, the only issue I have with Drew is that her marriage is failing and that and that she's has an unsuccessful acting career. I'm like, girl. Anyway. And Candy was like, okay, but did you, you know, throw a shoe at her? <laughs> is all I want to know. So Anthony claims he hit Drew with his shoe because she hit him with her bag first. Something ain't adding up. The math ain't math. And I don't know who lying because we know Drew do like to lie. But, um, because, like, why would he come out of thin air and hit you with a shoe? If somebody was there and they can please clear up the air, that would be great. Either way, I don't think it's appropriate for no man to be throwing those shoes at no woman. I just don't like that. I don't care what you got going on. Everyone should keep their hands to themselves. However, he's giving. He really don't like women. Because he even said, oh, I love women. I... It seemed like you don't. I don't know. I just, <laughs> it kind of seemed like you really just do not. But okay. Well, it seemed like he don't like Drew. He's talking about she owe him a check. Like, okay, but throwing a shoe is not going to get you paid, honey. Do what the other girl did who lost that court case. Take her to court and try to get the money back. So, Kenya goes out of her way. Marcel says hi. He was like, hello. Like, hi. Just being cordial and trying to move on with his night. He's getting his camera time in drama free for a change unlike over there in Huntsville and she want to speak to him he like mm, no I really don't I'd rather not not really please no and she's like no no I insist like let me talk to you like girl why Did, nothing got accomplished she claims she got loud with him she got buck with him because he was raising his voice to her and per usual she didn't have a man with her like always and I was actually with Sheree on this one. Like, girl, you never have a man with you. So, I mean, and, and what else is new? Listen, what happened to that friend, that guy she used to be bringing around back in the day, like pre-Brooklyn? Where's he at? Is he around? Bring him back around so you have somebody so you can stop trying to match these men's energy. Why are you always getting into it? What's going on? Now, Martel was getting quite sassy and his friend girl should have been checking that, but... I don't know. It was just too much. Like, stay away from each other like Martel was trying to do. So, Sheree um, shades Kenya because in the confessional about her being manless because she's really not her friend and that's on that. Martel apologized and she was like, okay, well, now I can, you know, go on with my night. And he's like, don't you think you owe me an apology? And she's like, I mean, I apologize if you felt away, but really, no, I don't think I owe you anything. <laughs> I'd rather her do that than give a fake apology, but I wish the whole thing just didn't even happen. It really just didn't do what, you know, it, it, it didn't, it didn't change anything. Like, she's talking about she protective over Sheree for what? Sheree ain't protective over you. So, a trillion hours later, when the baby is trying to take a nap after a long day of sitting up for no good reason at all, Sheree decides to finally bring the baby out. Um... If I was Baby Mecca's mama, I would be tired of her using my child as a prop. But anyway, that's a good baby. She was nice and quiet for the most part. Had a, such a long day. All them people all around this young infant. Mm, I wouldn't have felt comfortable having all the people around my baby till she was at least a year. But it ain't about me what I think. <laughs> so during family photos, everyone's trying to figure out who is this random woman that's standing in front of Bob that looks exactly like him. Is it his woman? Is it his friend? Is it his cousin? Is it, who is his, his daughter that we never even heard about? And she like she about 30. What's going on? So Sheree tells Bob, introduce me to Candace. Well, how do you know her name if you ain't never heard? Because she's like, I don't know who that is. I ain't never seen this woman a day in my life. I don't know this lady. Never seen her, heard of her, met her, nothing. So Sheree is insisting she don't know her. Uh, Y'all let me know. I don't really believe it. I think everybody was going along for the sake of the story to try to, you know, end the episode off with some kind of bang. Let me know what y'all are thinking. I just, it ain't making sense to me. It's too many missing pieces. 
Um, but the daughter seems to know Sheree's kids. So I really find it hard to believe that this girl be around your kids and they never said anything ever. Because if it was my mama, I would have surely told never. Especially now she grown, y'all divorced. Like, why not? Like, I don't know. It's just odd. So Kenya says she met Bob first years ago when he was cheating on Sheree with her friend. But they didn't know he was married. I bet y'all didn't know. And if y'all did know, would that matter? Like, would it really have made a difference? Um, more importantly, why is Martel in the family photos? <laughs> like, why is he there? Now you got to try to crap him out and it's a whole thing. Like, just, ugh, it just shouldn't have been there. So Bob is talking to the ladies and they're asking him about his daughter that Sheree never knew about. Um, he said he and Sheree were on a need to know basis back then. I don't understand it because if you told her you had two kids, why wouldn't you tell her about a third? Why would you keep her a secret? Furthermore, y'all got married and had two more kids, been married for years, got divorced. At no point until now you're having a grandchild, you decided to just show up with her and you weren't even going to introduce her? That don't make no sense. So the ladies were like, y'all were married, like what? And he was like, look, y'all ain't going to keep, um, y'all ain't going to keep pressing me. Okay. That's what you're not going to do. Cause I don't even let women I'm married to press their issues. So you definitely ain't. <laughs> he was like, now listen, if I pop up with some more, don't say nothing. And they was like, what? He claims he was just joking, but mm, I never seen it for Bob. And, uh, Sheree was like, look, he was a dog back then and he a dog now. He wasn't nothing then. He ain't nothing now. But it was just too casual. Like, okay, well, nice to meet you, girl. Bye. Like, no, no, no. Who do you have in my house? This is her house. Child, I don't know. Y'all let me know. Next week is a finale. Meet me back here so we can discuss. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Be sure to subscribe. We almost a 1K, okay? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.